the games for the week. And we are moving into week five. We're going to start on Thursday night, okay? Uh, and we're we're talking about basically every game except for, what, like four? Yeah, like four games. Um, sure. Thursday night, we got the Bucks going to the Bears. The Bears absolutely laid a dud at home against the Colts last week. And, you know, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Foles' first start. Foles is proving over and over and over again that he is a spark guy. He comes in. As the backup, he's your relief pitcher. He is not a starter for whatever reason. He could not get it done. Now, I will say this. The Colts' defense is fantastic. I would say, I, I didn't think they were going to be this before the season started. They have been really impressive. They've been dominant on defense. Yep. Absolutely dominant. But I will tell you this. That Tampa Bay defense is also dominant. Yes. I, I am a massive fan of this Tampa Bay defense. If you look at uh, at football outsiders, if you just want to look at NFL team efficiency and whatnot, uh, DVOA is their defense-adjusted value over average. That's a, a system that breaks down every single NFL play, compares a team's performance to a league baseline based on situation, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, as far as defense goes, the Bucks number seven in – no, sorry, number two in defensive DVOA. Number two. Two in the league. Number one is the Colts. They are neck and neck right there. Uh, the Colts, as far as offense goes, only number 24. Tampa Bay is number seven. Number seven. So the, Tampa Bay is the, as far as metrics go, Tampa Bay is the best team in the NFL. That's it's, right. It's almost not even close. Yep. Uh, Chicago, on the other hand, as <laughs> even though they are three and one, Chicago is down at number 22 when you have both offensive and defensive uh, uh DVOA tossed in there, like I this is I'm going to tell you this is one of my official picks. I love the Bucks in this spot. Oh, yeah. I think Mine they are too. going to hammer them, absolutely yeah. hammer them. So so the one the reason this line is dropping. Somebody brought up the fact the line was dropping. The reason this line is dropping is because uh, three major weapons for Tampa Bay are on the injury report. Uh, Howard is out for the season. Yep. Um, uh, Goodman Godwin is not going to play. And Evans is on the injury report, and he's questionable. Questionable. So, yeah, he's been questionable every week this year. Every week, I think he'll play. <laughs> yeah. The, the biggest thing is this: Tom Brady threw five touchdowns to five different dudes Sunday. Okay, he's gonna find somebody. All right, that's just what he's. That's that's how he's gonna run an offense. All right, they and and how they're gonna win this game and how they're gonna cover is not gonna be on the back of Tom. I don't think in this game. I think it's going to be on the back of defense. Gary's talked about that. Todd Bowles is yep. one of the best defensive minds in football. The quarterback leading that defense is Devin White, who is young and coming into his own and 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 really just putting his spark on that defense. And and it's just they're getting better and better every week. And this week they're going up against um, an opponent that I just don't think they're afraid of offensively at all. I agree with that. Um, Matt jumps in. He said, the winner of the Colts-Bears game is predicted the winner of the election in election years. Yeah, we talked yep. about that on Monday. What was it, what was it again? If the Colts win, then... Uh, then if, they, if the Colts win, the Republican has won every yeah. time. If the Bears win, then the uh, then the Democrat wins every time. So, uh, Birdie said, so the under sounds like a real solid look? Possibly. Um, I, I, do, I do like the under in this game, which is rare because scoring is up so high in the NFL this year. And every Thursday night game so far has hit over. I I would expect that the Bears do not score more than ten points in this game. I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked if the Bears get two touchdowns. Yeah, I now feel the same now way. Tom might give them one. Okay, all right. He's he's definitely kind of living in this Bruce Arians offense where it's let a rip tater chip, and 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 he's thrown interceptions that he has not thrown in the past, and I think that's a thing of Bruce getting his ear saying, "Hey, if you think you can fire it in there, take that shot," and because. And- so if it, if it beats us, we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah, but but take that shot. And that and don't get me wrong, the Bears do have guys that will. Oh no, that will absolutely take it back on you, Ed, Eddie that, Jackson. Yeah. I mean, that, those guys are unbelievable, unbelievable. No. And he's going to feel pressure. He's going to feel pressure. You know, yeah. Roquan Smith and 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 Khalil Mack. I, I think Mack is a little banged up right now, but he's still going to play. Um, and and he's going to be a force to reckon with. Those guys on the Bears defense. There's just nobody on the Bears offense that scares me right now. They're just not. Foles and Trubisky are just. I might I might live by I die by that one day, but but I'm just I'm just not afraid of them right now. Yeah, no, you're you're right about that. McKinnon, by the way, said Colts have surprised everyone this year with that defense. Good God. lord, they're playing SEC style ball, and I love watching it. 
Yeah, it is yeah. really fun running the football and 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 stopping the run. Are you uh, you're on the Bucks, right? I'm on the Bucks. That's and a gambling pick. By the way, Birdie was asking why the line was dropping like the Titanic. <laughs> Uh, the line didn't actually drop. The line's actually gone up because uh, it, it opened at three, at least according to SBRodds.com. So, okay. yeah, it opened at three. It's up to three and a half at, at, I mean, pretty much across the board. Bavada's got it at four. But I, I still like Tampa Bay here. I think they win by at least a touchdown, if not more. Yeah, I think it's a touchdown game. Moving into the Sunday games, we're going to skip a couple. We're not talking Buffalo, Atlanta. I mean, uh, Buffalo, uh, Tennessee. We're not going to talk the Panthers in Atlanta. Um Let's move into the Raiders and the Chiefs. Divisional game, uh, AFC West. The Chiefs a 13-point favorite. And my first instinct was, eh, this seems like a lot of points. And then I went back and I looked. And I realized that the Chiefs have beaten the absolute dog piss out of the Raiders the last three times that they've played them. Since Mahomes became quarterback, he has absolutely housed this team. They've covered the spread uh, four of the last five against the Raiders, they are smoking these guys. Now, I think the Raiders have improved a little bit, but I also think that the Chiefs, like, when they want to turn it on, they can. And that's a little tricky when you're trying to bet against them. Uh, if this was over two touchdowns, then, yeah, I might take a look at this. But I, I'm i going to go ahead and roll with the Chiefs. I wrote down the Raiders here, but I'm, I'm rolling with the Chiefs on it because I, I just think this Chiefs team – especially in division, if they want to. I don't think the Raiders can get pressure on Mahomes with just their down four. So I, if if you can't do that, you cannot beat this football team. And so yeah, this is this is Ve- <laughs> excuse me, this is Vegas trying to just prevent anybody from teasing this game to a to a winnable number. They're, they're just they're just hanging on by dear life with uh with the Chiefs and the Ravens um, and the point spreads are just making them bigger and bigger and bigger every week. Yeah. I'm kind of – if I have to pick this game, which I'm I'm going to stay away from and I'm going to avoid it at all costs. If we have to pick it, we pick every big game, I would I would take the Raiders in the points and just hoping that, you know. It's something crazy some happens, time, backdoor yeah, cover, you know, something yeah, you like just that. Get, you just get a backdoor cover. I, I do think this Raiders team is is okay. Um, they're, not, they're not nearly as good as the Chiefs, but the Chiefs are capable of making mistakes and – you know, they do a sloppy game every now and then. I mean, hell, they played a really sloppy game against the Chargers in week two. So, you know, it's not it's not above them to play a game like that in division. Uh, it's 13 points. This is not college football, all right? It's just not. You just can't lay that to NFL teams. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nuts. It's it, These numbers are – they feel inflated, and then – I mean, my God. Well, they, they are inflated. I mean, they, they just are. They are, but, it, but man, if so the prediction tracker, I always talk about them. The average metric for this game is Chiefs by 13.7. Yep. Like, it's it's exactly where it's supposed to be. It's just nuts. Uh, Birdie said, uh, you can't say, what's A5, is that ass? Uh, Gary, I owe you. You're the man. I suck ass. Great call on the Packers. No Jags hat for you. <laughs> Wait, hey. the, the chat won't let you swear? I have no idea. I'm 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 pretty positive people have cursed me before. I would think so. Maybe maybe not in the live chat. I don't guess they have. Oh, maybe not. Weird. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's strange. That's strange. Um, YouTube said, censoring folks. Hey, it, whatever they need to do, man. It's all good. They, I, I will say this: there are people that have dog cussed us. That oh, yeah. they oh, Birdie said no. I typed it and it didn't post. I'll be damned. Okay, well, either way, it is what it is. Uh, he said, I like the under in those as well. Uh, Raiders just play such a slow offense. The Chiefs have been in no hurry to score either. I like under 56 and a half. I mean, 56 is uh, is one of the key numbers. So, yep. yeah, I mean, going going under that, yeah, you could probably make that happen. 35-21 would get there. Uh, Facebook will let you cuss. So, uh, McKinnon jumps in and says, Bama sucks ass. So, hey, whatever. And Zamora said, I think it depends on the word. I have no idea how the censorship stuff works. I know that on YouTube... Uh, they will hold it for review if it's a comment that is uh, that that uses curse words or any number of uh, slurs or whatever. Who has else. to review it? Us? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, oh. I mean, yeah, I I go in there. We've got so many of them. I mean, good gracious, it's just it, there's there's a lot of of people that but, a lot of people don't like you sometimes, Chris. I, you're I you're know, a little I more passionate that. than I am. I know that. <laughs> I just try and look I'm, at numbers. I'm I'm way more hateable than you are, Gary. I understand that. <laughs> 
Hey, it's a, you get fired up, and I think that's one of the reasons why people tune into the show. So I love it. Let's move on. We're staying at the noontime slot. We've got three more games in this slot. Philadelphia going to Pittsburgh. This is the battle for Pennsylvania. The Eagles have uh, have not looked great, but they got that W at the 49ers on Sunday night. They, to me, they still didn't look good, but, you know, they got a win. And a win is a win, and it can provide so much motivation and so much hope and everything else for a team that it kind of makes you second-guess this line here that's seven points. You know, Pittsburgh is a seven-point favorite. I... I am leaning Pittsburgh here, I think, because the the Eagles' offensive line is still so beat up, and their defense is still beat up, too. Like, they, their skill guys are still out, or at least questionable, probably not going to play this week. But they still got a ton of guys injured, and Wentz is just awful. I, I mean, he's he is... He has played so bad. <laughs> there was a, a tweet that I saw maybe earlier today that uh, that the two quarterbacks that have already been benched as starters this year had better accuracy numbers than Carson Wentz this year. Carson Wentz <laughs> from a from a clean pocket. Carson Wentz's accuracy is forty two percent this year. It's the worst in the NFL. Like it's, him and him and Baker Mayfield need to get a room somewhere. Uh, Baker is like kill themselves substantially better than than Carson Wentz this, this season. This season. Uh, Wentz, uh, Matt said, uh, Wentz has played bad since his wife came into the picture. I, I mean, I don't know about all that, right? Like, didn't they get married? Did he recently he... get married? I don't know. No, I thought they got married, like, his rookie season. And then his sophomore year was the year that he had, like, an MVP year. Yeah, the sophomore year is the year he had a great year. Hey, Birdie, by the way, showing some love for you. said, tell me who Gary hates. Uh, tell me who Gary, uh, hates Chris. I will take care of it. Chris is a deer. Thank you. Thank you, Birdie. <laughs> He's a big, lovable bear. <laughs> Um, okay, so I, I'm rolling Steelers here. Like yeah, I, I, no, that's the only play. You cannot You cannot in good faith bet any money on these Eagles team. Yeah. If they win or if they cover, it's just dumbass luck. They're yeah. not good. And, and I'm so tired of people still, still making excuses for Carson. Yeah. He doesn't have any weapons. Everybody's hurt. Nobody makes those excuses for Aaron Rodgers. Nobody makes those excuses for Russell Wilson. Nobody made those excuses for Tom Brady in New England. No, we we don't allow. We just say it's part of the game. Okay. Yeah. Make your guys better. Yes, you're correct. You're 100 percent correct. Let's uh let's move on. Let's talk about the Los Angeles Rams here. Uh, the Rams are a seven point favorite on the road at Washington. And this is a noon game for the Rams, who have done this before. They came over and played against the uh, the Bills. And, yeah, it's a little crazy. Uh, Birdie said, yeah, Chris, I knew you would jump on that Steelers bandwagon. I did it. <laughs> oh, no. No, that's just a this game bet situation. That is not a bandwagon bet. No, uh, no. No, no, no. It's all good. This is it, Any chance Chris gets to bet against the Eagles, he's going to take it. He's going to take yeah. it. Well, until, until they find a quarterback, why would I not? Uh, or an offensive line, or any number of things, right? Like, there's just so much wrong with that Eagles organization. I just don't believe in Carson. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Uh, moving back into the Rams here. Rams and Washington. Washington, Ron Rivera pulled the plug on Dwayne Haskins. Yes, sir. And, and it's not – I don't think that Haskins was necessarily awful last week. I mean, he, we talked about it in the recap. Like, So, he threw for over 300 yards in that game. He just can't score. He when yeah. when they get into the red zone, I mean, he's just not an, a very great, a good quarterback. Bad okay? decisions. Yeah, he he's he's just not. He's not the guy. And and I don't I don't know that Kyle Allen is great, but Kyle Allen's better than him. The offense should look better. I like that he did it early in the week. So Kyle Allen has the week of practice t- with the ones to get ready for this game. Yep. And uh, and I, hey, I I like the I like the football team. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I know you do. I, I'm going to take them, and I'm going to take the points, and I'm going to have them in my round robin. Interesting. Now, of course, I everybody don't think remembers. this Rams team is great. Birdie just said, I bet the Washington team to win the uh, the the, NV, the NGV, NFL East, or NFC East, sorry, uh, today, plus 1,100. Love the fact that Rivera is going for this. I, I'm not. I'm not against that. Plus eleven hundred is a fantastic bet. That division is dog shit. Yes. Five wins could win it. Yes. No, you're you're one hundred percent right about that. Uh, it, if people don't remember, Kyle Allen is the guy that came in for Cam Newton, and they what did they go like four and zero? 
Yeah, like they, they four, four or five four straight wins. Yeah. No, they rolled they rolled it off. And this defense is really good. The reason this defense has kind of struggled the last couple of weeks is the turnovers. They're on the field too much, and they're having to defend 30 and 40 yards, not 90 yards, not 80 yards. Yes. Yes, you're right. They're having to de- they're having to defend too much of the field. It, it and, and it's just you just can't do that. So I, I like this play. I like this. What this tells me is if the football team continues to struggle this year. Ron Rivera has enough power in that locker room to move on from Haskins. Haskins was not a uh, a Bruce Allen pick, okay, the team president. All right, they got fired. No, Haskins, he was, he was, was a Dan pick. Was it was a Dan Snyder pick because Dan wanted the local DeMatha kid from D.C., yep. okay? And the fact that he has the power to pull him, that says – that says Ron wields a lot of power in that locker room. But it it and, also says that that they were looking for a quarterback, and it just it wasn't just the yeah. fact that it was a local kid. It was just Dwayne Haskins was the next guy up in that list, and no, they no, picked no, no, it no. like fifteen. That, that, there's a lot of people that said hey, if they had a, if they picked ninth, they would have taken it. He yeah. was the guy on their list that they were going to draft, and and everybody else in the NFL, he wasn't going to be a first round draft pick. So you just get him wherever you fall. <laughs> Birdie jumping in and said, dipping on camera, brother. It's about time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nasty habit. I'm trying to quit. But I'm also, you know, I'm drinking bourbon today. So it is what it is. Uh, Birdie said, hey, Rivera picked Allen over Cam. That says something. Yeah. It, at Kyle Allen won like five straight games. Now, the offense, eventually, everybody kind of caught up to it. That's right. But, you know, he ain't a bad quarterback. Like, I, I'm, I'm taking Washington to cover the seven here. I don't know if they're going to win the game, but I, I think they could. That defense is legit. Yeah, I think the defense is legit, and nothing about the Rams' offense has scared me lately. Well, and, and the Rams played at home last week, so yeah. it's not like they stayed on the East Coast and they just got used to East Coast time. Like eventually, that twelve o'clock game is going to catch up to them. So I'll tell you this: that Rams' offense has looked good in one game so far, and you know what game that was? That was against Dallas. Yep. And we're finding that everybody looks good against Dallas. Well, and I will say this: the Rams look pretty good against the Bills. Uh, but it took a long time for them to get rolling, and then eventually, I'd say it, it took it took over half the game for them to get going and got going. You're right, you're yeah. right. And so, but it 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 still took a little while. Uh, Birdie said, "Love the look, love the look." Hey, cheers to it, cheers to it. Hey, we're just a bunch of guys sitting around talking sports, man. That's what this is. It's just a hangout. That is what winning cures everything is all about. Staying in that twelve o'clock hour, this is the last one. This is the Cincinnati Bengals going to the Baltimore Ravens. This is another thirteen. At eight. Birdie said garbage points against the Bills, though. No, 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 no. They had the lead until late in that game. Yeah, they that yeah, wasn't I was garbage to say, points. The, Bill, the Bills had to come back to hang on for yeah. their life. So, I mean, they, they won 35-32. That wasn't garbage points. Come on, brother. Uh, Bengals and the Ravens. Uh, this is your boy. This is Joe Burrow. Talk to me. <laughs> Joey me covers, baby. 4-0 against the spread. <sighs> I'm not betting him this week. I, I'm going to take Cincy. Are you really? I'm That's taking, a lot of points. Now, okay, in this situation, yes, they're my pick. It's yes. a lot of points. It's a it's, it's a hell of a lot of points. At, Lamar has been great, but there are games where that offense, if they don't get rolling early, they just abandon that. But they did it against the Chiefs. They just abandoned their offense. It's so, insane. Got got a news alert today. Lamar didn't practice today with a knee injury. Now I'm certain he is fine. But there is a world in which they did pull him last week when they got up pretty big to, to keep some of these hits off of him. There, there is a world in which if they get up and they think, you know, three scores is good, two scores is good, you know, that they, they pull him and, you know, you get a backdoor cover pretty easily. I mean, it's down to 12 and a half at some spots. I mean, I might really bet that one. I might – that's not one of my official plays. I, I worry because the Ravens' defense is real good. This is one of those where I, I said this set, son, uh, uh, Monday when we did the show, uh, it, it wouldn't upset me if if Joey came down with a little tummy bug. Yeah, no, I, I remember you talking about that. I so let me let me look this up right quick. I'm I'm gonna check and see what this matchup has been like for the last however many years because I, it's division like a, a division opponent. Like, it is a division I, opponent, but the Bengals have been pretty bad the last couple of years, and they're still not great. No, no, no. They are certainly not. But and the I Ravens feel, are a team you don't want to play in a weak trench. No, no, you, no. You're, you're you correct. better be strong in the trenches you come to the Ravens. Let's see. We're going to go. Uh, I'm using the database here. We're going to see what happens. Uh, 
the Bengals have covered... Da, 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 da. Hey, they have covered five of the last seven against the Ravens. Just all saying. Right. And all those are, are numbers that were smaller than 13. Yep. So, now they did not cover last November, but last October it was a 23-17 to 17 game. Yeah. No, I, I would I would I would not take the Ravens at all. Yeah. Because it's just too many points. Uh, but I would be afraid to bet the the Bills. I mean the the Bengals. Verdi uh jumped in. He said it was a twenty three or twenty eight to three Bills lead. Yes, it was, but eventually that thing got turned back around and I'm with you, garbage time is is a certain number of points in a certain quarter. I get that. But still oh, still don't talk don't 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 speak these things, Birdie. Uh, Birdie, don't, don't yeah, speak I, I worry Burrow doesn't finish this one. Uh, he was getting murdered by all teams except the Jags, who have no pass rush. Ravens have a pass rush. He's in trouble. Uh, I, uh, who is... I'm who I'm most worried about because it's I don't think the I don't think the Ravens' pass rush is quite what the Steelers is. That's the game I would be worried about his life. Like them and the Browns are are the biggest ones. And the Browns, he was. He oh was yeah, Miles got to him. Miles yeah. got him a lot. Yeah, but he, but he. Stood up in there. He showed I, up, I and they covered. Like it. I don't like it. I can understand, but man, I, I just like I, I'm I'm gonna take the I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with the Bengals. We'll we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Let's move out of the noon slot, the 1 p.m. Eastern slot. Let's jump into the afternoon games. Um, we've got you know, there's Miami. We're not gonna talk Jacksonville, Houston. That just seems it, it somehow Houston fired their coach and got more boring. Like <laughs> Romeo Cornell is maybe. The most boring Come coach. On. It, he is. I, what do you want me to do? I think that's the maybe that's the job that the enemy ends up getting. I mean, but we'll see. Like, it, if it were me and I'm Eric Bienemy, I'd take that job immediately. I don't even wait for the postseason. Uh, hell no. I wouldn't take it at all. Oh, I'd 100% take that job. You give me Deshaun Watson on a brand new contract, like, we can fix the rest of this. I've got the no, you can, No, you cannot. You have no draft picks. You have no cap room. After this year, you're going to be back to that. You can get no. rid of the cap room. You can find cap room. Man, I don't know. I, I, I didn't trust Belichick, or not Belichick. Uh, I didn't trust uh, uh, Bill O'Brien. But I, I could trust somebody else in that spot. But either way. I don't know. We'll see. No, we'll see. no cap room and no draft picks. No. Houston and the Jags. Uh, that is one of my official gambling picks. So we'll we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Uh, let's see. McKinnon said the enemy's going to Atlanta. I bet you a bottle of bourbon, Gary. Eh, maybe, maybe. We'll see. I ain't. It depends on the bourbon. We'll talk about that. Uh, Miami and San Francisco. Not jumping into that one. Uh, too many guys hurt for San Francisco. Miami. You know, we're all just kind of waiting on on Tua to uh, take over there. Probably after the bye week. Uh, the biggest game of the day, in my opinion, is the Indianapolis Colts going to the Cleveland Browns. The Colts are a one-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. And with everything in my being, after that game last week against the Cowboys, I wanted to bet the Browns so badly. So badly. And and I can't do it. I think the Colts' defense is too good here. Um I don't trust Baker Mayfield to be able to make throws, and the Colts are going to make him throw the football. They are not. It, this is not the Cowboys' defense. The Browns are not going to be able to run up and down the field on that Colts' defense. I, I'm rolling Indianapolis here. They they will miss Chubb in this game. Oh yeah, they will. They will miss Chubb. Um, I think they will be able to run the ball a little bit. Baker has been just good enough. Um. My problems with Baker is is he can't read defenses, and that's been established now. But the play calling has just been unbelievable. You want to talk about hiding a flaw? I mean they they've done a pretty remarkable job hiding him. Yeah, and his flaws. I, I would take the Browns. They're the home team catching points. I know home field doesn't matter. Cleveland looks good. My fear is this: this Colts team got the hell beat out of them by Jacksonville. It at some point in time, I it's wonder. The first game of the year. Like no, it, no, 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 no. Hang on. Philip Rivers to win a game when he's going to be pressured. I mean, that's at a, some point in time, if Rivers has to throw the football, he's he's going to do bad. I mean, that's a, that's a good point. Like I, I'm I'm looking. I do at like this, the under in this game. Yeah, I, I was looking at this from you know the. I, I like the Browns' offensive line uh, a little bit, but I think that I like the Colts' defensive line a lot more. Justin Houston, DeForest Buckner, uh, Danico Autry, like those guys, I, I just I feel good about that Colts' defense. 
and and what they've been doing so far. I, I may I, I'm probably buying into this too much. I'm uh, you're, you're probably right. Philip Rivers is still a turnover machine. I don't know, man. Miles um, Garrett, defensive player of the week, baby. He's he's just a machine. Uh, Birdie said Browns off a big win in Dallas have Pittsburgh next week. Uh, Garrett going back to Pitt for the first time. Bad spot for the Browns. That's a okay. Maybe I feel a little bit better about it. Uh, Birdie said, I thought we were going to be opposite on this one, Gary, but we're not. Real tough spot in the schedule here for the Browns. I didn't even look at the schedule. Probably should have done that. But no. That's, I, I, look, I mean, I get I get all the logic, and it's a coin flip. I just think it's a coin flip. This is the only game outside of the Tennessee Bills game that we don't think is going to happen where two teams with a winning record are playing one another this week. Isn't that insane? That's just the weirdest damn thing in the world to me. Ins- well, I mean, aside from, from the Thursday night game. But, I mean, yeah, it's I don't really night. count the – Bears is a winning record, but I guess they are. Well, they they have one. Three and so. one. Like, that's, that's not bad. Uh, Simon Coolhand jumps in. He said, uh, I'm running hot at the moment all over the Browns' money line and the over in this game. Oh, the over scares the shit out of me. I mean, that's – yeah. If we get if we get bad Phillip Rivers, then there's definitely a world where we're going to see bad Baker. Bad Baker is going to rule his head at some point in time. The, so the that's going to happen. I just thought that that was going to happen next week against the Steelers because that's what Baker does. Terry jumped um, in and said, uh, what up? Didn't get my notification y'all were on. Hey, well, we're here. <laughs> well, Terry, in, brother. Uh, blaming, on, blaming so, on the notifications. So, so it, it, and by the way, everybody, when we go live, typically it is 4.30 p.m. every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Around there. 4.30 p.m. Central It's a very loose time. 4.30. It's a loose 4.30, but it's around that I don't know if we've ever been on 4.30, but. No, no, no. Maybe, it's been. Maybe one day. That one once upon a time we used to hit that fairly regularly, but uh, but it's been 4.40. <laughs> I've, I've had a lot more work to do now that the semester has begun so i've had more to deal with no you're good you're, um, you're, you're fine listen i don't give a shit you're fine so uh so this total is just all over the place as far as the colts and the browns go 45 and a half at bookmaker 47 at pinnacle 46 at bavada 46 and yeah. a half at bet online i mean it's just all over the place it opened at 47 and a half it's uh, all it's everything's below that Let's see. Uh, Birdie said, how are the Browns not favored at home? This is a trap line. I get what you're saying, Chris, but it's a bad spot. Home field just doesn't matter in the NFL at all. Not right now. Not, it not in the slightest. It, it usually doesn't a whole lot anyway, but it definitely does not this year. I mean, not 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 until they start. Hey, did you see uh, Ron DeSantis opened up all the, uh, all the Florida stadiums to have full capacity? Yes, sir. I did see that. <laughs> This is my question. Sidebar, my question is, is will the commissioners of these college leagues allow it? I don't think so. The SEC has said that they're not yet. So Because because at some point in time it does become a competitive advantage if if you know Florida gets to play all their home games with ninety thousand people and everybody else has seventeen to thirty five. That's a big difference, man. Yeah. No, it's and the same thing for Miami, and the same thing. Well, of course, 80,000 people ain't helping Florida State. They look like trash. Simon but, Coolhand said, Rivers will give the Browns a couple of short fields. They'll score and probably get close to 30. This game looks like 31 to 24 Browns. That You know what? That's how it goes over is the turnovers because I could see Baker giving them short field and then scoring on that. I don't think either one of these teams are going on long drives. All right? The Browns have the capability with Odell to to really, really bust a big play. Nobody really on the Colts team scares me to bust something 40, 50 yards or bigger. I don't think either one of these teams are driving the football on either one of these defenses. But how you bust this over, that's exactly what's going to happen. If the over hits, it will be because it's all short fields. Yeah, interceptions, turnovers, all that good stuff. Uh, Birdie said this notion of home field not meaning anything is a myth. It's not a myth. (laughs) It is not a myth. How many road teams up to last week? Now I didn't follow last week, but up to last week, it was like seventy percent of road teams won outright. Yeah, it was pretty nuts. But they were all covering. Yeah. Uh, Birdie uh, Simon Coolhand said Birdie straight over from the presidential address. That's what I'm talking about. Was there a presidential address today? I was watching baseball. I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I watched. I, I watched the Braves. I was. I was working until now. So, so I, I had the Braves on. I was trying to finish up tickets. I was. I was knocking out a whole bunch of stuff. Hey, what? Uh, you, you taking uh, the Browns? Yes, sir. I'm taking my brownies. Taking the brownies. All right. Uh, here's a game that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. But, uh, well, maybe it does. I don't know because everybody's still in it in the East. I mean, good gracious. The NFC East is just a dumpster fire. The Giants are headed to Dallas. And Jim Nance and Tony Romo and that bunch, they were not ever going to call the 
uh, 4-0 and Bills against the 3-0 and Titans, they were going to call the Giants, who are winless, and the one-win Dallas Cowboys. Because that is just business suicide to not focus in on this game, regardless of how bad the records are, which is that's insane, kind of crazy. But Dallas is a nine and a half point favorite in this spot, and you can my, get them at ten. Yeah, you can get them at ten. Well, if, if you like the Giants, you can get them at ten. Um, I, I got to tell you, I immediately thought, man, that's just a lot of points because I would imagine that uh, that old Danny is going to be able to, you know put up some points against this this Cowboys defense. Everybody else has been able to. And then I thought, you know what? I don't trust this Giants offense to be able to score on air right now. Like I, And that's basically what they're well, going against here. Uh, we're going we're gonna to find out can they score on air because that's what they're about to play against. Yeah. Um, I, I'm rolling with Dallas to cover the 9.5. Uh, I don't feel great about it. I, I would but, hold my nose and take the Giants. This Dallas team ain't beating anybody by double digits. Uh, Birdie said, when's the last time the Giants scored a touchdown? Uh, it's been at least two games ago. Well, yeah, they didn't score I mean, one last week. And, and and was it before that? Yeah, they scored one before that, I think. Hold on. Hey, I'm about to find out for real. So uh, They, they haven't been held touchdown without a touchdown in two weeks, I don't uh, think. Since, since Saquon got hurt, I mean, it's possible. No, they scored after that. Let's see. They uh, So, they lost to, let's see, they lost 26-16 to to the Steelers. They lost 17-13 to to the Bears. And then they got beat uh, uh, thirty six to nine to the forty niners, and uh, in seventeen to nine against the Rams. Holy shit! They haven't scored a touchdown in two weeks. It, it, against the forty niners was the I last. I think they've only no, scored the, like uh, two or three on the year. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Simon Coolhand said against the Bears. Yeah, yeah. It was two weeks ago. Um, Jesus Christ! That is bananas. Yeah, that's the thing, man. I just. Yeah, the Cowboys might be the play. Chill. Oh, oh that makes me want to vomit. <laughs> Simon Coolhand said Cowboys look good minus 10. They can score 40 here. The Giants struggle to get past 20. That They would struggle to get past 20 against anybody right now. Like, that offense is putrid. Like it's And, and the defense now, is not me, great. Can I, give, can I just a little spin zone? Just a, just, a, a, just a curmudgeon, okay? Okay. We're talking about the 49ers defense. Talking about the Bears defense. Okay. Okay. We're, we're, okay. We're talking about some teams that actually show up and line up eleven guys. There's a chance that the Cowboys will try to do this with eight. Okay. This this total is fifty four. I don't understand that at all. That, that, that's Vegas is assuming that the Giants have to score. Yeah, and I would imagine that they will. Uh, fifty four. I mean, that's a that's a thirty five to twenty game. This is you the know? weirdest thing. No, it's I, the I will I will not be playing this game at all because I can't figure any of this shit out. Yeah, I mean, this is just this, this is a weird slate this this week, man. Just a weird slate. Um, I got five I like. I got five I like a lot. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll I get got to four that. I like a lot and one homer pick. We'll uh, we'll get to that here momentarily. You you taking Dallas? I, yeah, I have to. And to somebody, yes, there's a world that Dallas can score forty in this game. I mean, yes. that that could happen. And and if you lock the Giants in a stadium by themselves, they wouldn't hit forty overnight. Yeah, or or maybe even thirty. So. Yeah. Uh, Birdie said it's still a divisional game, man. Uh, t- Double digits <laughs> in divisional game just sounds like suicide delay. Terry said, uh, going to be a lot of onside kicks ran back for touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, I can uh, believe that. I can believe that. Good gracious. Um, you want to hit Denver and New England real quick? Yeah. Stefan Gilmore on. probably out this week. Um, Cam look Newton. at Bill Belichick playing chess where everybody else playing checkers. How ridiculous was that? that hey, Gilmore. <laughs> Go give him a kiss after the game. That's just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> give him a little smooch right there on the chin. <laughs> now, everybody understands viral load. More than likely, uh, Pat Mahomes is in no real danger whatsoever. Even though he was right there hugging up on Gilmore, it, it's viral load. you got to be around somebody for a long amount of time to be able to get how much you need of viral, the virus. Viral right? load sounds like a little penicillin will fix that. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, let's see. Bertie said, aren't you guys laying uh, DD in all divisional games this week? Uh, that sounds scary to me, just FYI. Hey, yeah, man, look, these it, our, our official picks we will we will get to. Don't worry. We will get to. We're just trying to pick these games on what we would think, but we ain't betting every single one of these. And I have not, by the way. I have taken, I think, the dog in both of those divisional games. Well, except for Dallas. Well, yeah, I'm just talking about the Ravens and the, and the Chiefs game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Those uh, are divisional games yeah, that are you double digits. Did. Yeah, you took uh, you took the Raiders and you took uh, the Bengals. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm taking the dog in both of them. You have got that correct. Uh, so let's let's talk Denver and New England 
Let me make sure I highlight it so I put it on our on our list. We have not been great at these picks, by the way, but you can find them over on the website, winningcureseverything.com. Uh, go over to the picks section. It's right up there in the navigation bar. Um, no, no, no. Birdie said, ah, okay, I, uh, I thought I heard they were plays. My bad. No, no, no. We will get to that here momentarily. Don't worry. Uh, Terry said, nah, don't believe that... Uh, that don't believe that girl penicillin doesn't cure everything. <laughs> oh God. Um, I don't like Denver at all this week. I think even with the Pats best player on offense and their best player on defense out, I still think that they find a there, way. Hang on now. God. Cam might play. Cam might be fine. I have no idea what the protocol is for the well, NFL. I mean, he's he's got to have two straight negative tests that are at least 24 hours apart, but uh, I don't think that we've gotten that yet. Oh, if we haven't gotten that now, I don't know that we're getting it. I, I don't think we're getting it. I don't think Cam's playing this weekend. So, okay. well, uh, Bill's big wrong. on if you don't practice, you don't play. It is. Uh, it, Sweet Jesus, please tell me that Stidham's going to play over Hoyer. Man, I would think so. Not that he was any better, but I'd no, at least I, give I, the I, young I, kid a chance over the I thought old Stidham, bastard that's worthless. I thought Stidham looked fine. No, the, the first interception was 100% not his fault, and the second yeah. one was just him trying to make, a, make something happen. Yeah, he was just happen. trying to make a play. I, I didn't think <laughs> he was bad at all. Play. No, so, I, didn't, I didn't either. I didn't either, by the way. Neither one of them are great. Somebody on Twitter pissed me off that night. I was I was already not having a good day, you could tell, as the game was going. And somebody, I don't remember who it was, some blue check mark dude, made the comment that if I couldn't imagine what Pats fans would be saying if this was Cam Newton making all these debacles that Brian Hoyer made. And I thought, is that a race-baiting question? I think it, because, it sounds like it. Because... I'm a Boston has had their problems with race in the past. Not denying that, okay? They got to own that shit, all right? And it's fine. But I'm 100% certain that there is no way on earth that Cam Newton would have gotten any more vitriol out of me than Brian Hoyer did. The shit that I was saying about Brian Hoyer that night, telling you, if Jesus is real, he was not happy with me. (laughs) Very, very disappointed. And one Christopher Giannini that night. Uh, Hoyer was, you know, it's kind of crazy because Hoyer has been in that Pats organization before. Um, they brought him as a, as a we backup. We got the ball in the 13-yard line or closer three times and came away with zero points. I mean, it's absurd. It's if absurd. ever there was a time to take somebody's helmet and just smash them in the face with it, that was it. Birdie said Hoyer was awful. He was an, uh, an embarrassment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he absolutely was. Uh, I don't like uh, uh, ripping. Bill, Bill like is going to have spot. a defense put together. This might be the biggest underplay in the world. We're going to hand the ball off 19,000 times. They're going to score zero points unless, the, unless uh, McManus just – or Mc, whatever their, their field goal kicker is who just kicks the shit out of the ball in that air. He, he, unless he gets seven field goals, they're not scoring. There's uh there's not a total on this game. Yeah, right I now. saw there was not a total on this game because they're trying to think, are we gonna put this bitch in the thirties? I mean, that's that's really so I'm looking at Bet Online right now and da, 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 da. And let's see. They 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 don't even have this game up at Bet Online. So they have taken this one off the board. I guess since um I mean I'll check a couple of the spots right quick, but I, I guess because of the uh, the Gilmore Positive, you know, they're trying yeah. to figure out if they're actually going to play the game or not. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at Bet US now, and we'll see if they've got anything on it. But I don't think that they do. Nope, they took it down. Okay. So, uh, it, it, so the line that was out before was 11. Seems like a lot of points, but it won't care. be 11 now. I, I don't think there's any way on earth this thing closes at 11. It's uh, it's at 10 at Heritage and 10 at Wager <laughs> Web and a couple of spots. Uh, it opened at 10. I, I mean, I would still take it at 11. Like I, I think they will absolutely. I don't know that well, the, the Broncos only will be play able to I could make. The only play I could make would be taking laying the points, no matter what they are. Yeah, it, I would be scared to death of it. Um, let's move off of that. Let's move into Sunday night football, and then we'll talk about the Monday night matchup really quick. Yeah. Uh, Seattle minus seven as a home favorite over the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, so my first thought was, eh, Vikings have looked a lot better here the last couple of weeks. I feel pretty good about the running game and whatnot, but I think that Seattle is uh, is a little better against the run than people want to give them credit for. Um, their defense isn't great. I mean, it's number 21 in defensive DVOA. The offense is ridiculous right now, 
And I, my first thought was seven points is way too much in this matchup, and it was just going based on, hey, it's the Vikings and the Seahawks. I think this is another spot where Kirk Cousins can try and do a little too much, um, and they can end up getting caught because of it. It's kind of like the Colts game all over again. I, I'm going to roll with Seattle minus the seven here at home. Okay, so I'm going to go the other way. I think this Minnesota team is playing pretty good offensively, and uh, this is a t- so Seattle. I like the Seattle team. This defense is not good. That you, you talked about, they're not good at all. Everybody yeah. can score on them. I, I I think I'm going over on all their games from here on out until they hit in the 60s. Uh, I just think anybody can score 25 on them. I think they can score 30 30 to 35 on everybody, and I. I I think they're good offensively. If I had to, I'm going to take Minnesota in the points. Seattle's playing nothing but really close games. You know, they didn't pull away from Miami until late, real late in that game. You want me to? Uh, you want me to tell you a little, uh, a little secret here? Yeah. Defensive DVOA. It it combines pass defense and rush defense. Okay. Pass defense. Seattle is number twenty nine. That that does not surprise me at all. Rushing defense, they're number six in the league. Uh, okay, hang on. That that's a stat that's lying to you, though. All right, hear me out. Okay, that's, that's lying to you. That is that is last year. Rutgers was number four in passing defense in the Big Ten. Okay, that's, because nobody runs the football on them because it's so damn easy to throw on them. That's a that's a good point. That's a good point. That, that's a stat that's absolutely lying to you. You might be right this, about that. This is why I don't like analytics because well, all well, you math guys are lying out your ass. Well, no, because this isn't like this is efficiency. This is it doesn't, it doesn't the rushing if, plays. If nobody runs the football, if you try to run it once or twice and you get three yards, and every time you throw it, you get seventeen yards. Why the hell would you run it? I mean, that's, that's so you so you tried it three times. You didn't get a lot of yards, and so therefore your numbers inflated. Uh, okay, that's a, that's a good And point. that offense is really good, and so other teams can't run the football because they have to throw because they're, they're so far behind. Uh, Birdie said Pats did rush the ball decently against Seattle. Uh, they, yeah, but Cam Newton also threw for like a bajillion yards. A bajillion yards. Yeah. And, he, and they ran on all of them. Simon, I, I think they'll be fine. I think you can run on this defense. I don't think this defense is good. Yeah, Simon jumped in. Seahawks signed uh, Snacks Harrison. I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make. But. Is Snacks going to play this quickly? I would imagine I mean, defensive players you can just throw in there a yeah, lot you, of times. You can kind so. of just toss them in. They'll, they'll just jump in the rotation. So yeah, I would just imagine get into the rotation. All right, so you're taking Minnesota, huh? Uh, yeah, I'll take Minnesota in the points. Sounds good to me. Not an official pick. We're getting yeah. to those. Yeah, we'll we'll get to those. We'll get to those. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Monday night matchup. This would be the Chargers at the Saints. Saints are an eight point favorite. Not quite across the board, but it's pretty damn close. Uh, some of them are seven and a half. Uh, whatever. Let's see. Birdie said signed to practice squad at this point. Oh, I thought he was actually signed uh, uh, to the actual team. I thought he was signed off the... Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Uh, either way. Either way. I don't think it's going to make a massive difference here. Uh, Chargers at the Saints. Saints eight-point favorite here. I... The Saints have not impressed me a lot at all. Um, nope. <laughs> Terry's trying to get you started up. You see that? No, but, hang but, on, let me get back there. I went over said, to SBR to look at the lines. He said, but you can't count on Cam. Like, <laughs> he's just trying to egg you on, man. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm taking the Chargers plus the eight. I think it's just too many points. I, I like what Justin Herbert's been doing. I don't necessarily he like the Chargers good. team, but I, I also, I it's as good as I feel like Drew Brees looked last week, just to, like the zip on the ball looked like it was back. I still don't know if they're going to have Thomas back. I still don't, you know, he's questionable this week. It looks like he's going to play, but who knows? Uh, Simon said you can promote from practice squad at any time this season, right? Like, yes, absolutely. I think so. Yeah. So it didn't really matter, but yeah, yeah. So I, I'm going Chargers here. I, I think at the most this should be a touchdown. Like it, the fact that I'm getting more than a touchdown, I feel good with the Chargers, even playing at New Orleans. Um, I'm glad this game's on Monday night. You know, because I, it, like I don't know if. The Chargers will be able to travel on, like, Saturday. So, I'd imagine yeah. the Chargers will travel in on Sunday. But, uh, yeah, I feel uh, – I mean, I feel pretty good about this. Listen, Justin Herbert's been incredible so far, all right? And and that locker room seems to like him a lot. They, they, those receivers are trusting him more and more, um, and he is building some camaraderie with those guys. He, he is so much better than anything I thought he was going to be coming out of college. Just had it wrong. And uh, and, and I think I think they're good. I also think the Saints team, that defense was supposed to be amazing. This was supposed to be the most complete team in the NFL. 
man, they're they're not. No. They're not super impressive at all. This is aside from the river, uh, from the uh, breeze uh, concerns. Defensively, I, I think the Chargers can score. I think the Chargers are going to pretty much play everybody to to one score games across the board. I think they're going to be a tough team to blow out. I think so too. Uh, Bernie, and I'm going to tell you this: if Bosa and Ingram get loose, yeah, Drew Drew Brees will not have a good day. No, you're, just you're right about that. Uh, Birdie brings up an interesting point here. He said, rookie quarterback in this third start on the road, playing Drew Brees on Monday night against a team that's in a must-win spot. I worry for Herbert this week. It's a tough spot. Uh, and he said, no Eckler. Uh, Saints I'm never not, I'm are. I'm not worried about Eckler. R- running backs to me this year, Jesus, outside of Alvin Kamara, I, I, I don't know that any of them are any different. I really don't. Well, hey, I, I will. Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook's different. That's a different beast. That's a no, whole he's, different No, he's a breed. stud. He's a stud. I love the guy. I, I just wonder if he goes down, is Matson not doing the exact same damn thing? No. I've watched I've watched too many offenses just just roll and replace. I thought our team, my my Browns were gonna go down when when Nick Chubb went down. And and literally they had seven guys that all averaged seven point eight yards a touch or more that, was that against, all touched the ball at least five times. That's against the Cowboys. But it doesn't matter. Like you just keep you just keep hey, look, rolling dudes out there. I will, is, I will say this. What has the 49ers done? Just roll new dudes out there. What has Jacksonville done? Son of a bitch. They let go of everybody. They got guys I've never even heard. Of. I didn't even know these cats played in college and we we cover college football. The, the 49ers May I remind you, lost at home to the Eagles last week. So I understand rolling new dudes out there, but they lost at home. That was a quarterback situation, not a running back situation, sir. Agreed, but I, what I'm saying is, yes, the running backs, you can find them, dime a dozen, all that kind of stuff, right? I'm, I'm with you. Kareem Hunt, who Birdie just brings up here, is not just an average back. He's not a typical yeah, dude. But, but, but some but dude I understand named Dequez Johnson. Jackson and, and, yeah, Johnson, and yeah. what's his name, Hilliard. Like, like they are just dudes. All yeah, right? but those they guys just came, came in. off a of scrap heat. Those guys came in after Kareem Hunt had already beaten them down, right? The, that there Cowboys was no defense. beating them down. Kareem Hunt only touched the ball like seven or eight times that game because he's nursing a, a groin injury. Yes, but what I'm He didn't beat anybody down. He that, just had really good runs. That Cowboys team was defeated. But I rolled off like five other reasons, like five I other teams that are from. not that Cowboys team that are just re- replacing dudes. This Chargers team, Eckler went down at a pretty early oh, time. Yeah. And no, guess no, no. what? Other guys just you. come in. I agree with you on that. So it, with, with, with the Chargers, yes, I don't think Eckler is a difference maker. But there, there are some different one, makers out there. One but. running back. No, there is one running back in all the NFL that if he goes down, his team goes to shit. And that is this Saints team. Yeah, if Kamara goes down there in some serious trouble. That is yeah. that is sixty percent of their offense. Yeah. I mean it's it's pretty nuts. He has been They go from being a Super Bowl contender to being a team that cannot make the playoffs. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. All right, so you're rolling Chargers too, huh? Give me the Chargers. Let's roll with the Chargers. All right, we've already gone over an hour. Let's go ahead and dive into 